Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Um, today is January 31st, and we're going to be going over uh, Oswald Chambers' daily devotion for that uh, that day. And the title of his devotion today is, Do You See Your Calling? The wrote scripture he mentions is Romans 1.1, 1, 1, separated to the gospel of God. A calling is not primarily to be holy men and women, but to be proclaimers of the gospel of God. The one all-important thing is that the gospel of God should be recognized as the abiding reality. Reality is not human goodness or holiness or heaven or hell. It is redemption. The need to perceive this is the most vital need of the Christian worker today. As workers, we have to get used to the revelation that redemption is the only reality. Personal holiness is an effect of redemption, not the cause of it. We read that again. Personal holiness is an effect of redemption, not the cause of it. If we place our faith in human goodness, we will go under when testing comes. Paul did not say that he separated himself, but when it pleased God, who separated me? Like Galatians 1.15 Paul was not overly interested in his own character, and as long as our eyes are focused on our own personal holiness, we will never even get close to the full reality of redemption. Christian workers fail because they place their desire for their own holiness above their desire to know God. Don't ask me to be confronted with the strong reality of redemption on behalf of the filth of human life surrounding me today. What I want is anything God can do for me to make me more desirable in my own eyes. To talk that way is a sign that the reality of the gospel of God has not begun to touch me. There is no reckless abandon to God in that. God cannot deliver me while my interest is merely in my own character. Paul was not conscious of himself. He was recklessly abandoned, totally surrendered, and separated by God for one purpose, to proclaim the gospel of God. See Romans 9.3. Um, you know, the um, it, it back in, in uh, what people would term as the Dark Ages, in the 11, 1200s, 1300s. Um, there were lots of, there were people who would separate themselves, and there's still some today. They would separate themselves to be holy men, to be separate from the world and go somewhere where they could be by themselves and uh, pray and worship. And then there were monasteries and different things later on too. But they felt that there was a call to be holy. Like if I, if I uh, abstained from food or and took a vow of poverty or chastity or, or whatever it might be that, they would become holy. Their purpose was to be holy. And, um, you know, if, if we put all of our faith and our stock in, um, in our character traits being more, uh, more, more pronounced and then being more ingrained in us as if, uh, me being uh, less, less covetous, um, less inclined to adultery, whatever, whatever the things might be that we may want to put off. If we put our, our 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 whole faith in our own holiness, and that God is judging us by our Christian character traits or our habits, then um, we're missing the point. Mr. Chambers says the all important thing is that the gospel of God should be recognized as the abiding reality. Reality is not human human goodness or holiness or heaven or hell. It is redemption. I'm not sure exactly what Mr. Chambers is is saying by what reality is. But the idea that um, the gospel message is, 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 is the most important. And that's true because redemption comes through the preaching and teaching of the gospel. And God had called Paul, um, Jesus had called Paul to, um, to preach that gospel. He separated him from the womb, it says in Romans. Um, he, uh, God, God prepared Paul's life and all the circumstances surrounding it so that Paul would be the man that was ready to preach the gospel from the Old Testament and demonstrate and prove from the scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah. And that happened when the Holy Spirit invaded Paul's life, and Paul became a born-again Christian, and he he turned to live for Jesus, knowing that he had been separated for that particular purpose. And the more that he focused on Christ the more, and fulfilling his mission, the more his life fell in line, and the more he was conformed to the image of Christ. You know, we... We, we can fail when uh, we place our desire above our own holiness. I, I have to be holy. I have to do this. I have to do that without wanting to know God himself. And, um, you know, it, 
it can be a, a, a pursuit that a pursuit for holiness, but not a holiness where I'm pursuing the Lord, but I'm pursuing the things that the Lord will, will demonstrate through me. And it can actually become another idol if we're not careful. You know, Paul, Paul had his marching orders and he focused on the Lord and he focused on what he was called to do. You know, there, there are um, a lot of Christian workers fail because they, they, they take their eyes off Christ. They take their eyes off the Lord. You know, there, in, in Paul, there was a reckless abandon to God that just ditched everything else in life for the mission that God had given him. How many of us are able to say that about ourselves? Um, it's not very it's not very many. Um, there's probably a select few, and nothing gets in the way of their service to the Lord in the place that they have he, they have been called. You know, not each one of each one of us isn't going to be called to be a minister, a preacher, a pastor. You might be doing something small. You know, I mean, you might wh whatever it is that God has called you to, whether it's one on one evangelism, whether it's one on one discipleship, whether it's teaching a Bible study once a week. What, it doesn't matter what it is. If you give yourself to that purpose and to the purpose of knowing the Lord and, and being with him, your holiness will flow from that relationship. Your time in the word getting to know God, your time in, in teaching, in, in listening to other teachers and preachers who faithfully teach the word will begin to transform you. And the word is especially the way that happens. This brings to mind a scripture that... Uh, in 2 Corinthians verse, um, verse 18, it says, And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same in image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. You know, the gospel message and, and the Lord, when we're beholding the Lord, and really the way that we do that now is through the Scriptures, it's through the Bible. We read and study the Word of God that's been revealed to His apostles and prophets and then passed down from church generation to church generation to us. God is revealing Himself through that Word by His Holy Spirit. When we study it, when we start to see Jesus in that, we start becoming transformed. It says it very clearly. We, with all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. The, the passages before the, the paragraphs before that are talking about the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. In the old covenant, Moses would come down from the mountain after being with God, and he would have to put a veil over his, his head so that the glory wouldn't shine out. And an interesting thing is that Moses didn't put it over his face because he didn't want people, he didn't want people to see that. The reason the Bible says he put it over his face was so that the people wouldn't see the fading of that glory. Moses would be radiating from being in the presence of God when he came down the mountain. That glory that shone so brightly was fading away over time. And it says, um, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. And in verse 16, it talks about, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image. So on the one sense, the Old Testament, Moses is in the presence of God, and the glory that's shining from his face as he comes down is fading away. It's a representation of the Old Covenant that's going away. And when in the New Covenant, the, they talk about the veil being lifted. That veil with unveiled face, we behold God's glory, and that we are changed and transformed by that. That takes place primarily through the Word. And I would encourage you, brothers and sisters, to read the Word, study the Word, listen to God's call in your life, spend time with Him, and your holiness is going to flow from that. I'm not saying that we shouldn't pursue holiness. The Bible in, in Hebrews chapter 12 tells us to pursue holiness without which no one will see the Lord. We're supposed to pursue new character habits. Put off the old man, Paul says in Ephesians 4, 17 through 24. Renew your minds and put on the new man. And then he lists old behaviors to put off and new ones to put on. Do not be drunk with wine, but rather be filled with the Spirit. Uh, do not have false, speak false or lie, but rather speak the truth in love. 
Um, there's a whole bunch of those things uh, in there. You know, thieves should no longer steal, but we should rather work with their hands so they might have something to give somebody a need. And all those things we're supposed to do, but they shouldn't be the driving focus of our life, and especially not to uh, try to make ourselves more acceptable to God. We're acceptable to God because of what Christ has done in our hearts, because what he has done, excuse me, not in our hearts, what Christ has done on the cross that is applied to our hearts by the Holy Spirit when we become born-again Christians. Those things that we do are out of gratitude for a king who's who's done such a mighty work of mercy and compassion by giving us new life. And while we're supposed to do those things, if they're the abiding focus of our life to the neglect of our relationship with Jesus and to the neglect of the ministry that God has given each one of us, then we're not doing all that great. And, and honestly, folks, if I'm honest, I have a struggle. I have a hard time focusing on those things. The world's a fast place and it wants to draw you. But the Lord has been really, really blessing me with opportunities. You know, when I started these videos, I told you, I'm going to get more out of this than you. Because I get to read it, and then I get to think about how I'm going to share it with you, and then I get to share it. So I'm getting the messages three times. You know, it, it's, it works out that way. Sometimes I wonder if God doesn't put a knuckleheads in positions where they get to share the word because they need that. Um, Paul told Timothy, Timothy something similar when he told him, you know, uh, Preach the word, and then by by you, you'll save your hearers and yourself as well. I don't, it's a paraphrase. I don't know exactly where that's at, but um, I'm real grateful that God has given me this opportunity. And you know, some couple people have commented to me that you know, thank you for good preaching and whatnot, or good sharing. And uh, I just want to make it very clear publicly that if you get anything out of these videos, if there's any change in your hearts, that's not me. I'm just a guy sharing some thoughts. And when I read the scriptures and when I share with you something that that uh, that God uses in your hearts, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. And all glory should go to God alone and to his Holy Spirit for that and to the Lord. Um, so I'm glad to be an agent if anybody's getting any benefit out of these. But uh, it's definitely not from me. I'm just, uh, well, God used the jackass in the Old Testament to talk to Balaam. So I'm um, not saying I'm a jackass, but I can be one sometimes. Anyhow, let me pray for everybody. Dear Lord, just thank you for this day. Thank you for your kindness to us, Lord. Thank you for your mercy and your compassion. Um, I just pray that uh, you help us recognize your call, Lord, and focus on you and not uh, not things that that uh, that are less than you, Lord God. Help us not to crowd out the best for what's good. I just want to pray for anybody listening or watching this, Lord God, that you would bless their minds and their hearts with your presence that your Holy Spirit would help them, Lord God, to become the people that you've designed them to be, Lord God, people that are willing to uh, yield their hearts to you and live in a way that pleases you and also to obey you, Lord God. If there's anyone who has any difficulties, Lord, that are causing them to have difficulty turning to you, Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would remove them and that you would bless them, Lord God, with the desire to turn to you and give them the strength and the power through the Holy Spirit to do that. And I just thank you, Lord, for all the kindness you've given me over these years. And uh, thank you for um, beginning to restore many things that I personally lost. And I just thank you, Lord, for being good to me. And I pray that you would be good to these listeners as well. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to thank everybody for watching. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. And you all have a blessed day. Bye.